Hello, my name is Elizaveta Shashkova, and today I'm going to talk about some interesting new opportunities appeared in Python 3.6. And first, let me introduce myself. I'm a software developer at the, J the JetBrace company. I'm working in PyCharm team. I work on debugger in PyCharm. And I've come here from St. Petersburg. Uh, when we write programs, unfortunately, we always introduce bugs into them. And there are many different ways to find these bugs. For example, you can just simply add print statements. Uh, also, some people prefer logging. In fact, it's the same print statements, but with ability to turn it on, off, or add some options. But there is a big separate group of tools named debuggers. Uh, debuggers are much more complicated than, than logging because they allow users to pause the program in some place. They allow to execute stepping commands. So to monitor the, the program execution line by line, uh, watch uh, the variables values, and do something else. But unfortunately, there are many people who prefer pre-statements and logging to debuggers. Why such people exist? The answer is quite easy, because debugger is rather slow. On average, in big real-life programs, uh, it's usually almost 30 times slower to run program under debugger than run it without debugger. Uh, I think it isn't breaking news for you, because everybody knows that debuggers usually slow down program execution. But why does it happen? And what can we do with that? Uh, today in my talk, I'm going to answer to these questions. And we will learn how to build Python debugger and how to make it faster. Let's start with tracing debugger. Uh, it's named tracing because of a tracing function. Uh, Python, Python provides a standard way to set this system tracing function. Uh, it takes three arguments, frame, event, and arc. Frame uh, object it's, uh, contains the information about the current state of the program. Event uh, is the string representing the event which uh, appeared in the program, and argument, the argument of this event. Uh, let's define a very simple tracing function. It, um, here, it prints the uh, line number of the, under the execution and event which arrived to our program. Uh, let's see how it works. For example, we have very simple function foo. And we define this tracing function. On the first, we will receive a event call on the line one because we called function foo. After that, we receive event line on the line two because line two is executed. After that, we receive two events line again on the lines three and four. And after that, the uh, output hi bob will appear in our program. After that, we will receive event lines again on lines three and four. And then uh, execution goes to line five, and we receive event return on the line five. That means that we are leaving the current function, we are leaving the current frame. OK, how can we build debugging, debugger based on this function? Debugger consists of two parts, breakpoints and stepping commands. Breakpoint allows uh, to stop program on some special place, and stepping commands allow to uh, execute command monitor program execution line by line. Uh, and we can uh, impl implement both these parts of debugger with our tracing function. Uh, for breakpoints, we can, uh, inside our tracing function, we can check the current line number. And if its line number equals breakpoints line number, we understand that we need to pause program in this place. So we call some breakpoint function, which uh, pause our program. In fact, it's continue in infinite loop until program until user continues program execution. And for stepping, we can use our tracing function too. We just check the type of event which arrived to our program, to our tracing function, and handle it in different cases. 
Okay, we built our tracing debugger, it works, but we tested it just with a very simple program. But what if we consider more complicated program? For example, this function calculate, it uh, sums number from zero to the seventh power, power of 10. And let's define a very simple tracing function. It, in fact, doesn't even print anything. It's just return itself to continue tracing in the current frame. And let's run our function calculate. If we run it without debugger, it takes about one second to execute our program. But if we run it with our tracing function, it takes already almost seven seconds. Our tracing function is very, very simple, but we called it on every line of our program. And if, for example, we have in our tracing debugger three breakpoints, so it means that on every call in our tracing function, we need to iterate through loop with three elements, it takes already almost 20 seconds. So the pro it takes uh, much more time. The program becomes almost 25 times slower. And let me remind you that the tracing function was very simple. And this small experiment uh, shows us that, uh, explains why running a deb debugger is much slower than running program without debugger. And the main, program with our, the main problem with our tracing debugger is that we call our tracing function of every line of the program. OK, let's remember this problem, and let's consider a small story about Python 3.6. As everybody knows, Python 3.6 was released uh, half a year ago. It has many cool features, and one of them is new frame evaluation API. Uh, it was introduced in PEP 523, Python Enhancement Proposal, and um, PEP 523 allows to specify per, interpre per interpreter function pointer to handle the ev evaluation of frames. And also it adds a new field to the code object to use it by this frame evaluation function. Um, okay, let's... It's, Sounds a bit tricky, but we will consider an example. We'll try to write our custom frame evaluation function. Uh, this is a frame evaluation API. This is, in fact, C API. So in order to use it, you need to write C extension. But for example, you can write Cython extension, extension like we do it in PyCharm. And for better readability, I will use Python. Uh, but in fact, this code is written in Cython. OK, we'll defining our custom frame evaluation function. Uh, it takes two arguments, frame object, which we've already seen in tracing function, and exception flag. Uh, in, it, uh, we have frame object, so we can get the name of the current function. We can get the line number of this frame. So let's print this information and call the default frame evaluation function. We doesn't want to change program's behavior, we just want to print some interesting information. And let's see, and we need to define this, uh, to call this uh, custom frame evaluation function, and let's see how it works with example. We have three functions, first, second, and third. Uh, one call, <laughs> the first one calls the second, and the second calls the third. And when we run this program, we get this output. That means that our custom frame evaluation function was called on the line one when we entered the function first, on the line four when we entered function second, and on the line seven when we entered function third. Okay, it works, that's great. Uh, and also from this example, uh, we learned that our frame evaluation function was executed while entering every new frame and inside this frame evaluation function, we have an access to frame object. Uh, so for, to the code object as well. Okay, we know about this new cool Python 3.6 feature. And you remember that with tracing debugger, we have problem that we called tracing function on every line of the program. And if we 
What can we do with that? We can remove tracing function. But in this case, our debugger will stop working. So we can't just remove it, but we can replace tracing function with our custom frame evaluation function. And let's try to build frame evaluation debugger. Debugger based on custom frame evaluation function. Uh, as you remember, every debugger consists of two parts, breakpoints and stepping comments. Let's start with breakpoints. Uh, when we had tracing function, we had a complete mechanism to monitor program execution, because in every line we know all information about event, about line number, but in case of frame evaluation function, we don't have such mechanism. Uh, but we have only frame object, and we need somehow insert breakpoints into this new frame which we are entering, and we can do it another way. We can insert breakpoints code right into frames code. So, for example, if we have very simple function maximum, which returns the biggest value of two arguments, uh, how can we return the breakpoints? For example, if we want to insert breakpoint on the line three, that means that we want to insert some breakpoint function call uh, right before the return statement. So after our modification, the result will look like this. Uh, before, the, uh, before returning the value A, we want to call our breakpoint function and suspend program, and we want to wait so for some user comments. Okay, how can we insert one piece of code into another piece of code without changing the source code? We want to modify bytecode. Uh, let's use uh, standard module Ds, which shows the uh, Python bytecode in a hu human readable presentation. For example, for our function maximum, uh, the bytecode will be like this. This bytecode is generated for line two, this for line three, and this for line five. As you can see, the bytecode for line four wasn't generated because if else construction was replaced with this pop jump if false operator. Okay, our bytecode. In fact, we're not interested in what's going on inside our bytecode because for us it's just a sequence of operators with or without arguments. Each operation has its offset, these even numbers, and arguments. Uh, which can be absolute or relative jumps. For example, here we have an absolute jump from the operator pop jump if false to the operator with offset 12, load fast. Okay, and we want to insert our breakpoints code. Okay, we can just take sequence of bytes and insert it into another sequence of bytes. But we can't do it just without changing anything because, as I've already said, we have some jumps, so some references from one operator to another. And when we inserting our code, we need to update some arguments, offsets, because all operators after breakpoint, they go down and their offsets will be increased, so we need to change references to them from the other operators. But when we do it, our modification will be done because the resulting code will be the original code, but with the additional calling to breakpoint function. It sounds a bit scary, but in fact it is 200 lines in Python. We just have to write it carefully and it will work. Okay, now we know how to insert breakpoint, but we need to decide what to insert. Uh, it's quite easy to answer because for our breakpoint we can create some simple wrapper and its bytecode will is shown on the right side of the slide so we're just calling global uh, name we're just calling global function uh, before the bytecode modification we add this global function to the frame global variables dictionary so we can quickly just call it and inside Func this function, we can do anything we want, add some additional debugger functions, and we don't care about it. 
because for us it is just calling some global function and it's quite simple. Okay, our breakpoints are ready, but we still need to implement stepping in our debugger. There are two ways to implement stepping. Uh, of course, we can insert temporary breakpoint on every line of our program, but in such case, we will return to the previous situation when we called tracing function on every line of our program and it was, it slowed down our program significantly. So, we won't use this opportunity, but we will use all tracing function. When user wants to execute some stepping command, we enable all tracing function, handle events in our program, and if user wants to resume program execution, we just remove this tracing function and continue program execution until the next breakpoint. Okay, now our frame evaluation debugger is ready. We are looking forward to try it. Um, do you remember this slow example with function calculate? And as you remember, when we ran it with tracing debugger, it became uh, almost 25 times slower. So what about running with frame evaluation? Yes, uh, with frame evaluation, it runs almost as fast as without debugger. It happens because we are not calling tracing function of every line on every line of the program, and we just call this our breakpoint function once and uh, continue our program execution like there, like without debugger. So that's why it works so fast. But let's consider another example. Uh, what if we add some uh, additional function inside loop? For example, function foo that doesn't do anything, uh, but uh, that means that on every uh, step inside our loop, we call this function. After that, sad news that our frame evaluation debugger becomes slower, much, much slower, because we return to the previous situation. Uh, on, on every, uh, when we enter every new frame, we call our frame evaluation function and we add, do some checks inside it. So we, st we again return to the situation when our program becomes slow. Maybe uh, PEP 5.23 can help us again? Yes, it can. Uh, as you remember, it consists of two parts. Uh, we have already used the first part. We defined our custom frame evaluation function. But also there is a new field which appeared in uh, code object, this core extra, a scratch space uh, for code object, and we can store there some information. And for our frame evaluation debugger, we can use it quite easy. We can mark frames without breakpoints. So when we enter a frame and we know that there are no breakpoints there, we add a special flag to this frame and we know that uh, we, don't, we don't want to do any additional checks here. We can just return quickly default frame evaluation function and it will work quickly. So we know all the functions without breakpoints and we can skip them very quickly. And in this case, yes, we were right. After that, debugger becomes faster in all cases uh, we don't depend on such situations like in example two. And uh, I want to emphasize it again that uh, how PEP 523 helped us. Uh, the first part helped us to uh, define our custom frame evaluation function, and the second part helped us to mark frames without breakpoints and quickly skip them during debugging. Um, Okay, our frame evaluation debugger ready, and it works in different cases, but what about real results? Real life results exist. Frame evaluation debugger was implemented in PyCharm 2017.1. Uh, there is also PyCharm Community Edition, which is free and open source, so everybody can download it and try how it works. And it works in production. It isn't just an example, it's a real debugger 
in the integrated de development environment. And for some our for one of our benchmarks, for example, if program uh, if it took about 20 seconds to run program uh, under debugger. Uh, we, uh, before Frame Evolution API, we uh, added some Cython speedups. We write some bottlenecks of our programs in Cython, and it gave us, uh, it increases uh, debuggers execution. It takes uh, almost six seconds to run program with this debugger. But Frame Evolution uh, improved debugger speed significantly and it became almost 80 times faster. And the only thing that I can say after that is that frame evaluation rocks <laughs> because it gave opportunity to dramatically improve debugger's performance. And of course, it has some disadvantages and limitations because such debugger is a bit more complicated. So you need to implement byte code modification, you need to write C extension, in order to use this API. Uh, at, at the moment, it works only with CPython because it is, this API was implemented only in CPython and it's available only in Python 3.6. So I can say that frame evaluation debugger may be uh, yet another reason to move to Python 3.6 because most likely such Quicket debugger or some other tools will appear in many IDEs or De uh, developers' tools. And also, you might be inspired by my talk, uh, and you might find yet another use cases for custom frame evaluation function. Uh, because, as I've already said, uh, we used this frame evaluation function uh, in order to insert breakpoints uh, code into the original code. But in fact, we can insert everything. Uh, for example, we can insert some functions for logging. Uh, just imagine you can enable logging for all your program without changing source code. So there is no need to uh, write any uh, log statements during your program. You can just define this frame relation function and your logging will be enabled in your program. And you can disable frame relation function and uh, logging will be is off. So, uh, I believe that such use cases exist because originally this PEP was uh, created by authors of Microsoft's Pigeon project. Uh, Pigeon, it is a just-in-type compiler for, uh, in CPython, uh, and uh, they use a custom frame evaluation function in order to generate digit code and uh, use call extra field to store this GDAT code. So this uh, PEP uh, wasn't implemented for debuggers. Originally, it was implemented for JIT, but uh, successfully, we used it in debugger. That's why I believe that other use cases exist, and we need just search for them and try to implement them. Uh, let's move to Python 3.6. It's really cool release and let's find these use cases. Uh, if you want to try uh, to watch the whole code base of the today's example, you can check out my project on GitHub. Also, as I've already said, it's included into PyCharm Community Edition, so you can watch uh, the source code of PyCharm 2. And uh, also, I moved a bytecode modification to a separate library on PyPI, so you can just install it and use it. Everything is ready. There is a small toy example. There is library for bytecode modification. So everything is ready for your experiments. And I hope that all of you will, <laughs> just right after talk, you will try to do something interesting with new frame evaluation API. Now I'm ready to answer to your questions. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and Ask anything you want about it. Thank you. We have time for small questions, please.
Um, I really appreciate the presentation today, new uh, stepping in the frame. I didn't know about that. I'm wondering though, uh, PyTest used to rewrite the bytecode at startup to add this kind of uh, modification to the bytecode. What is the reason to do that uh, when we enter in the frame instead of redo doing it at the startup or whenever a user interacts with the debugger and sets a new breakpoint or remove an older one? Uh, uh, we can't do it in startup because uh, when we start our program, we don't have access to the frame object. Uh, the main uh, advantage of using this frame relation function that when it is called, uh, the frame object is one of its parameters. And you can ac have access to the code object, to the frame object, to global local variables, and you can change it. But in a startup, you can't get all the functions, for example, from your program. Of course, you can change source code, but it doesn't look like a good idea for creating debugger. <laughs> Hi, thanks for the talk. Can you use this to monkey patch C extensions? Uh, could you repeat, please? <laughs> Can you use this to monkey patch C extensions? Monkey patch C extensions. Which is normally not so easy, but Python code you can quite easily monkey patch, but maybe with this thing you can go deeper. Would it be <laughs> an opportunity for, I don't know, testing or mocking frameworks to do this at the C extension level? Mm. Maybe it is possible. Uh, in fact, I didn't try it, <laughs> but you can try and <laughs> t tell us about your results. <laughs> and for, uh, I'm not sure. I, I don't know the answer, so <laughs> unfortunately. Last question. Um, <clears throat> so you were um, inviting people to uh, create new use cases, but. Uh, what will happen if everybody writes to um, go uh, under extra? Uh, there is, um, in Frame Relation API, I, I didn't have enough time to mention it, but there is mechanism to multiple usage of this Frame uh, Evaluation API. When you use core extra, in fact, you uh, use it by index. You can see the number of usages and in order to not to intersect with other systems who use this core extra. So they are stored separately. Thank you very much. Give her a hand.